In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Those are the woods that scare the shit out of people. Do you see how dark it is in there? It is eight in the fucking morning. That's insane. Look. Creepy. Those are some really dense looking woods. They are very dark inside. I would like to see the perspective of being inside of the woods and seeing how dark it really is. I really enjoy scenery like that. I really enjoy walking through the woods in general and seeing something like that would just make me want to walk through the paths. Dang, that might actually be some of the best UFO footage I've ever seen. Honestly, I do not know if this is a real or fake video. It looks real, but it looks odd. You can see like that trail following behind it kind of makes it seem like if this is a real UFO, that it was using some kind of anti-gravity force field around it so it could move through space time. But if that's the case, I would think that if it's moving through space time, we would not be able to see it. So I, I really don't know what that could have been following behind it like an after image. If any of you guys know if this is real or fake, please let me know in the comments because I would like to know a little bit more about this. I've never been so creeped out about a tutorial in my life. I honestly don't know if this is a creature trying to practice being human or if this is a real person attempting to do a tutorial. I mean, she even sounds like she's trying to convince herself this is for her YouTube channel, not to mention the arms and the legs. And I don't, I don't know what this is. You have to watch this video and tell me what you think. It's tutorial time. So today it's time to do a YouTube tutorial. A perfect tutorial to do today. What's it going to be? Today's tutorial. Oh, how to... Whoa. Okay, this tutorial. Uh, this is the tutorial now. This is a can. This is my my YouTube. This is my YouTube account. Alan tutorial, and Alan tutorial shows people how to. How to do, how to, um, how to weatherize a hole. So first thing, step in the tutorial is take a weather, a, can, a weatherized can. And this is a hole. You weatherize, oh, I forgot. First thing you need is a kind of cloth. It's gotta be like some kind of satire, fake account that's meant to troll. Because there's some weird stuff going on in this video. Or maybe it's just someone that likes to live out in the woods and they just been out there for a while and they're just living their best life. And maybe they just have a cell phone and they go to their local McDonald's, hook up to their Wi-Fi and post their videos. That's kind of fun. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Have you seen it before? Because I've never seen this one before. I've never heard of this person. And it's pretty strange. If I ever ate something that doesn't agree with me, if it really doesn't agree with me, the first thing I reach for is um, activated charcoal. Everyone should have a bottle of activated charcoal at home. It's cheap and it's a, a wonderful thing to put into your stomach when you're feeling off and you don't know what it is. You're feeling you ate something or the bacteria got hold of, they're winning the battle against you or something, take some activated charcoal and it attracts anything that's harmful and poisonous to it, and you expel it. It is wonderful. If you think you had food poisoning, <laughs> put two or three pills of activated charcoal in you and watch what happens. It's, you'll feel better in, in, in a half an hour, in an hour. It's a simple trick I learned a long time ago. 
Okay, I am recording this to see if anyone can help me. I started seeing it a few days ago when I got back from my mom's house. I first thought it was a shadow or I thought it was just something that like wasn't there. And now I'm pretty sure it's in here with me. So I'm going to see if I can get it on camera. Okay, so I'm just going to be talking and seeing. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got it, but I'm going to check. Okay, I definitely got it. So the the weird thing is is that if I, if I don't check on it every so often it starts this You guys, there is a guy that can communicate with other dimensions using his vision, and he wants to teach you how to do it. This is called upside vision. It is an entirely new phenomenon never spoken about before. Yes, you can look back in mythology. Maybe this is what they were connecting with when they would talk about the Akashic Records. There is a way where he softens his focus and then he can literally see in front of him actual holographic images that he can interact with. And he believes that you might be able to do this too. If you can do this, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to connect you with him and give you his email. He's looking for more people like him. But he thinks there's ways to also train people how to do this. And I'm going to discuss more about what he calls the organic metaverse and also how you might be able to learn to do this in my next video. So stay tuned for part two. And real quick disclaimer, no, he is not crazy. He is not schizophrenic. He has actually been tested. They have tested his brain. People are studying him right now and writing papers on him, which you will hear about very soon. I'm just trying to help you be early to the game. Basically, we are superhumans, we have superpowers, and our consciousness is raising, and we're learning more about these awesome things. So keep an open mind and stay tuned for more. Bye! When I was younger, I was actually able to not necessarily perceive holographic images, but on a piece of paper, I could actually see the image that I wanted to draw. That's why I was kind of okay at drawing when I was younger. And for some reason, that ability has escaped my mind and I really do not know why maybe it's because my pineal gland is being calcified and I need to decalcify it or something's happening because I really used to be able to see images on paper and I could basically trace them and I kind of miss being able to do that how about any of you guys are you guys able to see hologram like images manipulate them utilize off of them let me know in the comments because that's pretty interesting I do think a lot of people have capabilities like this hey if you haven't done so already Go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And to the people that are not subscribed to the channel, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Questions for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Do I just leave it here? What's wrong with it? <coughs> oh my God. So just a good rule of thumb about really any type of wildlife, if they're not afraid of you, then you probably shouldn't get too close. This is a video that I got tagged in showing a girl who's discovered a deer on the side of the road exhibiting some very weird behavior. The deer is laying on the road with its head wobbling, appearing kind of uncoordinated, and then grunts at her and this scares the girl off. Now there's a few different diseases that deer can have that can cause this sort of behavior, but a lot of people were referencing something that's lately been decimating deer populations known as CWD. CWD is caused by prions and this disease is incurable. And one of the hallmark symptoms for deer with CWD is an increased amount of weight loss like this, they'll look mangy, have decreased coordination, and they'll lose fear of people. It's impossible to say with 100% certainty that this deer does have CWD, but there are a few symptoms here that do correlate. 
Either way, CWD is terrifying, contagious to other deer, and of course, incurable. That really sucks seeing animals in that condition. I have a feeling that deer probably was hit by a vehicle, and deer can also get rabies, so that's something to look after. And one thing I'm always worried about when it comes to like hunting season and you hunt white-tailed deer, I'm always a little nervous that maybe they have rabies and I'm not aware of it, even though you can technically eat an animal that has rabies, but it's still really sketchy and it's something that I'm always kind of worried about in the back of my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, today on May the 6th, of 2024, exactly at 11 a.m., this anomaly appeared here. And watch this. This is no longer an anomaly, guys. This is something else going on. And it's big. Look at this. Watch this sucker get bigger and bigger and bigger. Watch this. Look at the trajectory, or the trajectory, excuse me. It's getting bigger. I'm really, really concerned about, and look at the tidal wave. The tidal wave is at 83. The depth of it all is 83.7 feet high that is demonstrating here. What the hell is really going on? And there's extremely a strong wave coming from that area. My God, something's going on, guys. And this damn sure ain't normal. Look at the trajectory. It's submerging all of Africa. Look at this. It's working its way into the Atlantic. Unbelievable. This is the trajectory, guys, and it's, not, it's like we had the last time. Look at this. Getting bigger and bigger. Now look at the coastlines. you got to pay attention to the damn coastlines, guys. This is what they said was a glitch last time. This ain't no damn glitch. Something's going on. God damn, man. you got to be fucking kidding me. And then it just drops off. Well, you lose it right there. The data is data disappeared. That's where it drops off. Time. 8 a.m. on the 13th. That's the trajectory. By the 13th, it's going to reach that far, but it won't allow me to go any further because the data stops recording at that point. That's the trajectory of where this thing is 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 going to. You tell me what's wrong, guys. This is not normal. And this is now, every so many days, it shows up. Wow. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like the way I feel about it. The more that we keep, uh, keep telling you, the East Coast is going to be in danger. I would like to know what's going on in in South America, uh, in South Africa, because they got slammed really hard with a lot of with a heavy wave. Unbelievable. They're going to be hit really hard with with a severe tidal wave. Man, that is a huge anomaly. Let's just hope that it's not as dangerous as it looks, because it looks pretty nasty. This is where the weird begins. I cannot explain to you what you're about to see. That's because no one on Earth understands it yet. If you can't live with that, then you're not going to be happy with what lies up ahead. On the smallest possible scale that we've ever discovered, the quantum universe, the mere act of observation changes reality. Okay, photons, keep on coming. This time, we promise not to look. You're not going to believe this, but we can change the pattern on the far wall simply by not watching which slit the photons pass through. I know it sounds crazy, but in every trial ever conducted, the outcome depends on whether or not 
the experiment was observed. When a laser emits beams of light particles called photons at a screen with two slits, you'd expect to see two strips to correspond with the two slits. Instead, we see a pattern of light and dark bands. This suggests that light behaves like waves that pass through both slits simultaneously, interfering with each other to create the pattern on the second screen. However, when scientists used a measuring device to observe the slit that each photon passed through, the interference pattern disappeared and two strips appeared. The act of observing which slit it went through changed the behavior of the photons. No one knows why observing a particle causes its behavior to change. Yesterday I had a video about this topic and I, I was requested to play these videos or at least this concept of a video to get a better understanding of what the double slit experiment is. I kinda understand it a little bit better now. It basically simplified, if you have the two slits there, you're shooting photons through it. You would think that it would work as you're shooting the photons through the slits, it's going to align up with the slits. Well, through a measurement system not being observed, it was actually kind of spreading out past the slits, making a different form of pattern than expected. But when they actually went in and observed it and measured it, it was what was expected. So there was two different realities basically to it. One that was observed to the observable reality, and then one that was not the observable reality that was measured differently than what we could observe. And it makes a little bit more sense, but it's still really complicated and really confusing. Let me know if you guys enjoyed these clips because they are really out there. And I have a feeling in another 50 years, the science behind it's going to be more perfected and people are going to be laughing that we were even talking about this subject in this fashion. It's true, scientists potentially found an ocean of water underneath Earth's crust. Kind of. There's evidence that there's huge amounts of water 250 to 400 miles beneath Earth's surface trapped in the rocky mantle between these two layers, so right here. It's possible that there's so much water here that it could be up to three times the amount of water that's in Earth's oceans. But this water wouldn't be the same. Don't imagine an actual ocean down there. This water would be trapped in minerals, in, in rocks. It's not liquid because with 400 miles of earth on top of it and extremely high temperatures, water molecules split and bind into minerals crystal structures. What I'm saying is the water is in a really weird form. It's not liquid or water vapor. It's trapped inside the molecular structure of minerals. And there's evidence of this in seismic data from rocks melting in the mantle. And because a volcano in Brazil shot out a piece of ringwoodite from 400 miles beneath Earth's surface, and that had solid water bound into it. And scientists don't know if this is everywhere, but there is evidence, especially for large amounts of water underneath North America. So there's not necessarily an ocean of water underneath Earth's surface, but there could be an ocean's worth of solid water bound into minerals. And that is very cool. That is actually pretty cool. I've not heard about this. This is an older video, but I did not know that there was an actual, basically mineral lake. I could only imagine if there was businesses out there that dug 400 miles down into the earth just to get these minerals, they would probably try to sell it as some form of snortable water. I just recently found out that there was snortable coffee or more or less caffeine. And I think that's crazy. So I could only imagine that companies would do that with this type of water. So this video could cause severe ontological shock. This is a disclaimer. I've never done this before, but I'm doing it because this one warrants it. I'm not being dramatic. If you're not ready for your entire belief system, your understanding of humans and our place on earth and our history to be shattered, do not watch this video and I'm being very serious. For the rest of you, let's go for a little ride. Our government has come out even under oath and said that they have no evidence that we are dealing with extraterrestrials. And I believe them. I didn't used to. Now I do, and this is why. My research has concluded this. The two most common encounters on Earth are the Greys and the Nordics, okay? The Greys are future humans. They are a synthetic AI fusion. We will table that for this video. What we're going to talk about are the Nordics, which are also future humans. In the future, they had to escape. At this point, they realize they can't escape physically because they're contained in this holofield. They're contained in the solar system. 
The only way to escape is to actually graduate spiritually, to ascend up. They can't for some reason. So they must escape because of things going on on the earth. They escape to the past. Our ancient humans are the Atlanteans. They developed, established a place called Atlantis. It means the land of Atlas. They came from the future. They went back in time because they had developed time travel. Time travel is basically just anti-gravity. Once you manipulate gravity, you also manipulate time. Space and time are intertwined. Okay. They went back in time. They established Atlantis to escape their future debacle that they got in. Okay. Now, as we go through time, what do we see? This is what led me to this. There's a cyclical cataclysm. Something happens every so many years that wipes out basically all of humanity. But right before it happens, just like with Noah, that's the most famous one, so we'll talk about that. Somebody comes and says, hey, this is coming. Flood's coming, man. Build a boat. Gives them all the information. How did they know? Okay. How do they know what's coming and how they know how to survive? And then after the flood, after every cataclysm, these beings come, tall, long hair, beards, carrying a bag, and they reseed civilization. So before a cataclysm, they save a certain amount of people. After a cataclysm, they make sure that those people survive and thrive. Why? They don't care so much about the individual person. They don't care if you're happy or healthy or get that raise or anything, but they damn sure don't want humanity to get wiped out. Because if we cease to exist, they cease to exist. They're future humans. That's why they need us. <laughs> Pretty serious vested interest there. Okay, that's wild. Now, when we look at ancient, um, like, civilizations, ancient, like, in ancient aliens, they're always going to these, like, megaliths and these monuments and these temples and, and cities and stuff. And they're very advanced, extremely advanced. I mean, cosmologically, you know, architecturally, mathematically, engineering-wise, so advanced. There's so many things they did tens of thousands of years ago that we can't do today. It doesn't make any sense. It's because they came from the future, okay? Now, this is where it gets super interesting. They also put Easter eggs. They put breadcrumbs in to all of these civilizations. They built these giant monuments. They built these pyramids. They built all these things because they're leaving clues for themselves. They know when they see that statue of the bearded guy with the, the bag that that's them. It's a, it's a signature. That's why it's in every culture for thousands of years. These cultures had no contact with each other, yet... They made the statues that almost look the same, right? With the same bag, same handbag. Why? That is meaning that a cataclysm occurred there and these beings reseeded that population. They have to make sure humanity survives, period. But it's like, okay, think about it this way. If you went back to the caveman days and you met a caveman, you wouldn't really care what ends up happening to that caveman. You'd be like, hey, he's going to have a life, a family, a job. He's going to, you know, do caveman things, right? And he's going to learn his lessons and all that. It's not my job to intervene with that caveman. But you damn sure wouldn't go back in time and wipe out all the cavemen, right? Because we come from them. They evolve into us. See what I'm saying? We are like the cavemen to these, these people. We can call them people, okay? They're people. They're humans from the future that went back in time to escape something. And then they have to make sure it's a bootstrap paradox. They have to make sure that nothing happens to us. Because if something happens to us, it happens to them. But... They are also trying to fix their situation because they don't, just don't want to go in a loop. So they have to make sure that they continue to exist <laughs> by making sure we continue to exist. But then they're also trying to fix things. I think they are carefully, carefully editing their timeline to make sure they don't end up in the same place. Which is why we see Mandela effects, which is why we see strange time dilation things, which is why we see these interventions from them in these subtle ways. When it comes to our nuclear weapons, when it comes to our you know, environment, stuff like that. They're intervening in certain ways to try to ensure a better outcome for them. So this is my takeaway with all this, besides just melting your minds for fun. <laughs> and remember, disclaimer again, this could all be just wrong. I could just be a crazy guy in the woods for damn sure, right? I'm learning constantly, but this is where my research has led me now. And this is why I think it's important to put this out there, even though I do think I'm, I don't know. This is risky in a way. But I think it's important because I think that they want us to do better. I think the important takeaways here is what we see as gods, you know, the Olympians, the Devas, the Anunnaki, you know, um, these are us. They're humans, which shows our true human potential. And I think it's very important for everyone to realize what we're capable of a lot. But it's a cautionary tale because 
they had to go back in time because they messed things up because they couldn't spiritually ascend and because I think something physically happens to earth so we need to do better we don't want to just go in a loop if they are us and we are them we don't want that outcome we want a better outcome we need to be better we need to realize our true human potential we need to realize what we're capable of we need to realize that we are the gods we look at them as gods but we are them that is our potential but we have to use it in the right way we have to take care of this planet we have to take care of each other we have to be better so that we don't end up the way they ended up and I think that's why they're coming back to make sure that we don't just go in a loop so of course they're ensuring our survival so that they don't cease to exist that's step one <laughs> step two be better be better that's what I think is important here what do you guys think I know that's a lot I know that's heavy man that's heavy it changes everything it changes religion I won't even get into that but the religious part is a big part of this um, it changes everything okay changes what we think about a human our history I think these guys were leaving Easter eggs all through history. I think all of these ancient monuments and monoliths and, and temples and sculptures and all that stuff, they left that. They're leaving themselves information embedded in all this. That's why there's so much sacred geometry embedded in all these, these monuments and these pyramids. They're leaving themselves information. And the only way they know it would, would survive cataclysms, you know? Paper won't survive. Books won't survive. You know, computers won't survive. Stone will. Clay will. Gigantic monoliths and pyramids will. They're leaving and embedding information. And then they put their signature, their statues of themselves, with those handbags, all along the way. They are us. That is our potential. That is what we are capable of. So much. We're capable of so much. But we're also capable of so much destruction. That's the cautionary tale. Let's be better. Let's make sure we don't just go in a loop. Let's rise to the occasion. Let's be the gods that we know we can be. But let's use it for good. Let me know. What do you guys think of all this? Have a beautiful day. Peace. I mean, this wasn't like super mind blowing to me. I do like this theory. I think that this is actually a really interesting theory and it kind of makes sense a little bit. Why not be time travelers to travel in the past as a super sophisticated civilization you would technically be looked at as a god because of your advancements in your technology. And you keep going back in time or periods in time to help fix disasters that's going to affect their current time. Really interesting concept. I like this. Let me know in the comments of what you guys thought about this. This was pretty pretty good. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.